Welcome to another episode of On the Clock. We're here with your hosts, Raul Lascano and George Martinez. You're on the clock. What's going on, On the Clock fans, man? Welcome back to us this Thursday. Man, we got so much to tell you, man. We got such a packed show. We got a lot to talk about, me and George. Uh, for the agenda, man, what we're going to talk about is obviously football, what's going on in the NFL. Teams are, teams and players are opting out here. We also got baseball, 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 some major news coming out of there. Uh, we got NCAA changing up some schedules. Uh, NHL starts August 1st. We're going to touch on some of our some of the teams and what's going on there. And the biggest thing is the NBA first official games are tonight. Uh, we're going to talk about it with my, my guy, my right-hand man, George Martinez. What's up, man? How you been, bro? I'm doing great, man. I'm pumped for today's show. Don't forget, we also got Louisiana's very own. Oh, yeah. Jo- show. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Avion Pierce. I can't wait to do it, man. They call him greedy for a reason. He's a four-star DB, yeah, man. Yeah, man. You ever seen a, have that. you ever seen a 6'4 DB? No. Right. <laughs> right. I, can't, I want the world to see this kid. 6'4 <laughs> DB on the clock. I'm telling you. It's going to be magical, man. Don't forget, also, we have Vast Performance is on the show today. Can't wait to talk to them. Me either, man. That's a good sports facility to get trained at. Heard so much about them. But uh, but I, I want to get into it, man. I want to get right into it. Baseball, uh, big news yesterday. I don't know if you saw. Uh, <laughs> LA Dodgers uh, relief pitcher getting eight-game suspension for what transpired with them uh, against the Astros. A uh, little history there. I know you know, George. You know, that's the Astros. Uh, they beat the Dodgers in the World Series when they were doing that, you know, beating the drum thing, cheating around and uh, figuring out the pitcher, man. So I can't be mad the Dodgers are a little pissed off about what happened. You know what I mean? Yeah, the, the Dodgers are definitely a little pissed off, and rightfully so, for what happened to them. I mean, anybody that got cheated in, in the World Series, heck, in any type of game, you'd be upset. Yeah. You know, so J- Joe Kelly was that pitcher we're talking about, got suspended for eight games. <laughs> and you wonder... So, you know, we're experiencing sports in a new type of way with no fans. You know, what he got suspended for is for what he said, right? Yeah. So, he, you know, it's a nice swing. He strikes him out. They're going to the sideline. And he tells him, nice swing. And yeah. he uses a little foul language little there. A little B word there. A little beep. A little B word. <laughs> and then he tells him if he doesn't watch out, he's going to hit him. He's going to hit him again. The yeah. next time at bat. The bench is clear. Fights, altercation starts there where they kind of get in each other's face a little bit with mask on. It's kind of funny seeing (laughs) the mask come on. You know how close you got to be to cut somebody out now with a mask on? (laughs) To be heard. (laughs) Bring your butt here within five feet. I got to tell you something. (laughs) But stay six feet away. Stay six feet away. Six feet away. Let me cuss you out right there. Too close. Yeah. So the, the, the funny part of it was that if there was fans at the game, traditionally we never heard the actual conversation that occurred. But because yeah. it's an empty stadium, you hear it. So now you wonder, did Joe Kelly get suspended because there's no fans to cover up what he said? Somebody in the booth should have turned up the crowd noise. All the way. All the way. Blast the speakers. Don't do this. Yeah. I bet you from now on, that's exactly what happens. Oh, yeah. you. I mean, exactly what happens. Even if you don't hear it, you clearly see him mouthing it. I'm going to hit you next, next time you're up. You keep talking. That's crazy. And, you know, but yeah, they, I, eight games is what? The equivalent to what? 100 or 20 games in a 162 regular season, yeah. right? So, yeah. Yeah, but this this is in 66. They got 60 games. Yeah. So he's missing an eighth yeah. of, of the season with and, this. Now, he, it's eight games, and I'm surprised because normally when, when players get suspended, they get suspended for days. Yeah. Not games. So typically, pitchers, when they spend it for days, eight days, usually they miss a start. Yeah. Usually they miss maybe two starts. This is straight eight games. Yeah. MLB, so, MLB want to be harsh. They just want to be harsh. Yeah. yeah. They want to set a tone right. to, for everybody else that plays against the Astros. Which, which sucks for the Dodgers. I, I understand competition. I understand getting heated, but it really sucks because, like you said, it's 60 days. So now you lose another relief pitcher. Now we're right. digging, we're going to ask guys to go back to back sometimes. Or, you know, within two or three days, you got to go pitch again. And they don't right. get that time off. So that really screws things up. Yeah, I'm interested in how that ends up working out. And thinking about players dropping out and, and, and go, doing extra work that they need to, yep. the Patriots, I'm calling it right now. I'm calling it right now. I know you were talking to Drew Phillips yeah. earlier today. <laughs> Hashtag tank for Trevor <laughs> is in full effect in he, New England. Yeah, man. So On the last podcast, podcast, that's what he was saying, that, that sh- they're going to tank on purpose. Just to get Trevor Lawrence, but I mean, here we go. Do you think that's? Do you really think that's what happens? I mean, they paid money to go get Cam. Well, they didn't pay that much. Never mind. They didn't pay that much. They they didn't pay him that much to go get him. So think about this now. 
you got some big name players opting out. You got Patrick Chung, yes. who's opting out, starting safety. You got Dante Hightower, who's opting out. That's a starting linebacker. And there's six others on the list that are not going to be available for the Patriots. They lead, lead the NFL by far with most players opting out. Is this is this Bill Belichick playing a little a little chess? <laughs> it might be, man. You know, Bill Bill plays all these freaking games. He really does. So I wouldn't be surprised if he if he was playing the game. But I don't know if it's the players getting together and say, "Hey, we're gonna we're, we're not going to play this year," uh, because the NFL clearly hasn't stated what's going to happen for the season, and they've had time now. You, you've had UFC, you've had now NBA, MLB. So you've had time to try to come up with a plan. And I think college was kind of waiting to mirror NFL, but they've had time. They've had time to do it because the other guys that opt out too um, was uh, running back for da- Damian Williams from the Chiefs. So the right guard's gone for the Chiefs, and now the running back, Damian Williams, is gone. He's yeah, but that out. guy wasn't going to play a whole lot anyways with that rookie. That new right. rookie coming in from LSU. So what I was going to say was <laughs> when you got guys home. opting out, it, what's it going to take for the NFL to say we're not playing this season? I think if, if a player like Mahomes or Aaron Rodgers – sits there and says, hey, man, I'm opting out. I think the NFL's like, well, we might have to look into not playing this season if you have a big name like that. I don't think so. I think no matter what happens. You think Mahomes, if Mahomes have... says, I'm not playing this, you think the rest of the Chiefs still play? Yes. Oh, no. no. So here's here's the why. Here's the reason why. Sure. So the opt-out contract mm-hmm. is you get paid a base of 150 k Right. That's it. So in a situation like Patrick Chung, Dante Hightower, if they saved their money correctly, mm-hmm. a year off, making a buck fifty, that's not a problem. Some of these other guys mm-hmm. need that full paycheck because they because they haven't been saving the money from a year in and year out. Right. I think it causes headlines if, if you get a guy like Patrick Mahomes that's just signed a half a billion dollar contract and a lot of it's guaranteed and he already got a bunch of it at signing bonus. If he were to sit out, it may cause headlines, but I still think NFL plays no matter what. Um, I think most of the stars are still going to end up playing regardless because that's just how they are, who how they want to be. Right. Talking about big deals, I know Patrick Mahomes just signed a half a billion dollar contract we just talked about before in the show. He's the highest paid offensive player, but did you see? And he also bought ownership stake in the Kansas City Royals. So this guy is definitely planning forward life after retirement in a big, big way and and securing uh, generational wealth. Do you know who the new champ of being the highest paid defensive player goes out to now? I did, man. I did, Mr. Joey Bosa. What was was the final card? 103, 110, something like that? (laughs) Some ridiculous numbers for the Chargers? It, yeah, so it is ridiculous. So the the final the final figures for for Joey Bosa is, is right here. He signed a five year wait for it hundred and thirty five million dollar extension. Jesus. Okay. Now, what's crazy about that is seventy eight million dollars is fully guaranteed as soon as the pin signed. Wow. Okay. And then 102 million of it is guaranteed Mm -hmm. over the course of the year. He gets 78 right then and there. Ain't this Nick Bosa's brother? Yes. Yeah. He's probably going to ask Frisco, what's the deal? Oh yeah. How you pay, how you pay bro? What's crazy is that we are projecting this contract for Dak Prescott. Yeah. A quarterback. He's not a franchise quarterback. (laughs) Here you got the top defensive player mm-hmm. one of the okay i think i think he's in the top five list for sure are right. defensive players in the game man five year 135 million that's no jump change man no not at all that's nothing to bat an eye about i mean that's that's some serious money especially for a defensive lineman what was the current i wonder what the current rate was going anyway i think the current rate for a defensive lineman was probably what 50 60 mil this guy just jumped into another atmosphere <laughs> yeah he's, he's on a whole nother level Right, man. Right. What, what makes me it makes me a little worried when the Bucks have to resign Shaquille Barrett next year. <laughs> Shaquille's like, Shaquille's well, like, yes. looky here. Well, looky <laughs> here. I will classify yeah. as a defensive line. <laughs> and this is I'm playing outside linebacker. I'm yeah, playing don't DM, baby. Never put me back out there. I'm never doing that again. Give me my money. 
Uh, speaking of money, NHL might be making some money back here again. NHL starts uh, August 11th or, or August 1st. I apologize. August 1st, they come back. Uh, we get to see some lightning games, which are, I'm they're, excited for that. Yeah, we, we get to see them, but they're not going to be any stand. Nobody fans. Remember how you, you ever went to a lightning game, man? You ever oh, been, yeah. I've oh, been to a bunch of them. I love the love atmosphere it. down there, man. People standing outside, the, the, the band that plays across the street. You know what I'm saying? Going inside. I mean, it was beautiful atmosphere. So they come back uh, August 1st, man. So I can't wait for that. August 1st? Yeah. August 1st is the first uh, official game. Uh, the Lightning actually going to kick off August 3rd against the Washington mm-hmm. Capitals. Right. It's the, uh, the East qualifying game. So I, I think they're headed straight to the playoffs right now. Um, nice. It's kind of the way it's going to look. So they're, they're diving right into it here, trying to get this season wrapped up, finished up. So only the contenders are in for, for this year. So I'm excited to see kind of this uh, kind of roll through. Uh, talking about, you know, things going on and some crazy stuff, man. Did you, did you see the conversation, Keenan Allen and, and Mike Evans look, <laughs> we're having on social media? Look, so but before we get into it, cause I know how you feel about this, yes, man. the top 100 is voted on by the players, right? There, this is a, Keenan Allen is, a light is in war. his feelings a little bit. He, but, but He's in what, his feelings. But George rightfully so though. I think he's right. <laughs> I don't think I don't think Mike Evans is better than him. I think Mike Evans has a lot of yards. I think he, but if we go stat for stat, I don't know. So Keenan Allen might have a point my, here. My take on this is Keenan Allen mm-hmm. runs phenomenal routes. Yes, Keenan Allen does a great job of creating separation. If you're a defensive coordinator, who do you fear, Keenan Allen or Mike Evans? It's Mike Evans. Yeah, you feel Mike. It's Evans. Mike Evans. I'll give Who you. do you fear? You don't fear Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen does not keep you up at night. Right. Why? Because Keenan Allen is not a red zone threat. Mm-hmm. He's not a six foot four, go up and march you, create separation, force a double team kind of guy. Right. Keenan Allen, smaller statue, doesn't bang, doesn't get in there, is injury prone. Mm-hmm. So he mostly stays to the outside. I don't know, man. If I'm a DC, I'm worried about Mike Evans. I'm not worried about Keenan Allen a whole lot. Yeah, I, and I and I understand that. But from Keenan's point of view, he wasn't saying who's worried about me or not. But what he was saying was, you need to check my stats. Like, you got to check yeah. my stats. Check out what I'm doing. And there's no way. I think he. I think he also called. Out, he called out your other boy too. Uh, he did, Chris Godwin. <laughs> he called out Godwin, which 90 percent of the time Godwin just runs a seam route. But whatever. Well, you know, I won't. I won't mention none of that. But he he called him out too. Route running. We're talking about, come on, we're talking about route running wide receivers. Uh, Keen Allen does run good routes. He's, he has, a, and he has, a, he's been a, on the downfall of uh, Philip Rivers for a couple years now. You know what I'm saying? Philip hasn't really been Philip. You know what I'm saying? Get somebody in there that could really get him the ball a little bit, who's a gunslinger. Now we're, now we're talking because Philip Rivers wasn't Philip Rivers without a, without a running back. Yeah. And we forget. <laughs> okay. So here you go. I'm going to put you on the clock here. Yeah. You've got a quarterback to pick. Do you pick Philip Rivers or Jameis Winston? Because I know what you're going to say. I'm going to go with Philip Rivers. I'm not going to go with okay. James Winston. <laughs> so hold on a second. You want to take an old, just like you said, beat up yes. on the decline Philip Rivers yes. over Jameis, but yet you're using that same excuse what? as the reason why Ken Allen's numbers or isn't with a good quarterback. What? <laughs> what? That's not what you're my, not replacing. Might I remind you? Yes. Might I remind you? Defenders dropped 21 interceptions of Jameis Winston. Sure. Jameis could have had 51 picks. Mike Evans has those yards because you guys play from behind. So that's the only reason. So they does, went to a so does Keenan format. Allen. No. So does Keenan Allen. No. Keenan Allen was, Keenan Allen was in there when, when Philip Rivers was having a uh, – producing good numbers. They weren't going to playoffs or whatever, but Philip Rivers was having a good time. I just think when they switched OCs, it kind of went a different route, and Philip Rivers just wasn't feeling what they were trying to do. I, I really do, and he – he he burned his bridge there and he he's gone now, but you know, he's at the Colts. In, so we'll in the last six years, since you're mm-hmm. a stat guy, since you brought up stats, <laughs> in the last six years, no one has dealt with Mike Evans has done outside of Randy Moss. That's because they were playing from behind. So six years ago, was Philip Rivers not in his prime? Uh I think he was losing the prime. Well, as I say he was a good I, I don't know if he was in his prime. The prime years was when LT was there. That's when the prime time was there. And then he got rid of freaking LT like an idiot. He made it about and Gates. Yeah. Uh, Gates. Well, Gates stayed for a little. He left and then came back. He came back. <sighs> yeah. I don't know, man. I don't know. I have no idea. I know Keenan. Keenan feels some type of way. He don't get no love, man. He don't get no love. And besides, everybody knows what kind of numbers you guys are going to put up this year. 
Did you see Tom Brady's video? Oh boy, Did I you was see? excited. <laughs> excited. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie to you. That was that got me goosebumps hyped when I saw Woo. him. Oh my, he's having a great time. He's having he a good. Is. If you guys haven't seen it, go look at the Bucks Twitter page. Um, I think it says we're just getting started as the video. Yep. Yo, Tom Brady is over there, and I, George, you called it. He's throwing deep balls. <laughs> He's throwing. Oh, yeah. He was throwing a lot of deep balls. So he, I think Tom is ready to air that thing out, man. Yeah, I man. Really Father Time ain't, ain't caught up to him yet. Nope. Super Bowl. I'm buying my tickets. It's gonna be here in Tampa. <laughs> I don't have to I'm, go I'll far. I'll tell you right now, man. Podcast episode 21, baby. Live from the parking lot. Or, be on. or are we I'm, going I'm, inside? I'm, the... We going inside. <laughs> we using that media pass. <laughs> Right. That's a one time all year we use it. <laughs> That's going to be it. That is going to be it. The other thing that came out yesterday evening was the top 10 players that were voted by the players. Right. So what I'm going to do for you here, Raul, is I'm going to give you the top 10 here. Okay. And you tell me who doesn't belong in this top 10. So I'm going to start from number 10. We got Derrick Henry. Okay. We got Stefan Gilmore, number nine. DeAndre oh. Hopkins, number eight. Okay. George Kittle, number seven. Yeah. My favorite McCaffrey, Christian McCaffrey, number six. Okay. Michael, okay, no one guard, Thomas, number five. That's bad. That's not bad. Patrick, half a billion Mahomes. At four? At four. Huh. We got Aaron Donald, number three. Okay. Russell Wilson, number two. Huh. And then your number one. Player, Lamar, too fast, can't catch me, Jackson. So I, I agree with Lamar being one. I, I mean, we're, we're talking about dynamic players. I don't agree with Holmes being number four. I probably switch him and Russell. I could see that being a, a better top. Why the hell would they put five hundred three billion dollar quarterback at number four? four? You I don't know. know. I mean? Like where where does that come from? Especially with all the stuff he did, won the Super Bowl, came back several times in the playoffs. This dude's throwing no look passes in the NFL. <laughs> this is an NBA. He's throwing no look passes. He's a freaking rank number four. I, I don't know. I, I'm putting him at number two. I would put Russell at four because Russell still had a good year despite he, you know, he didn't have much weapons. So that's a, that's a rough top ten, man. That's, and that was voted on by who? That's that's the players. Really, the players vote on vote on this here now. Who's not? in the top 10 that you think deserves to, to be, be in the top 10. Oh, that's even better. We're talking offense, defense. Whoever you want. I mean, I don't know why Stephon Diggs isn't in there. He Stephon had, Diggs. Stephon yeah, Diggs, yeah. man. He, he should have been in there. Um, Kelsey's not in there. That, that's Kelsey. Kelsey's not. George Kittle. So who's a better tight end to you, George Kittle or Travis Kelsey? I think Kittle is faster than Kelsey. But if I gotta give, I'm gonna give the edge of toughness to Kelsey. I like Kelsey a lot, man. I like, I like so, what. It, so, Kelsey was ranked 18th. Really? And then the highest paid player on the defensive side came in at 17. Wow! And he still got 135 million dollars. <laughs> now, now again, and, and you've heard me say this a hundred times. Mm -hmm. I'm a huge Tom Brady fan. Right. Okay, Tom Brady came in at 14. That's a little high. Tom Brady, given the season he had last year with the Patriots, right. I don't think he's a top 20, top 25. I, I have him outside of my top 30. But what he did with the Patriots with nothing around him and very rookie, I, I would still give, I'm still giving him credit. And I'm, I'm, it's funny to hear you say that and me defend him. You know what I mean? Um, so I can see where was Drew Brees on that list? Is he even on the list? Drew Brees was twelfth, so he was two spots ahead. Okay. But like for example, Tom Brady's fourteenth ahead of Aaron Rodgers, who was sixteenth. And and I didn't Aaron go deeper in the playoffs and, than and here's another one. Deshaun Watts is twentieth. I'm I sorry, I have that. Aaron Rodgers and Deshaun Watts ahead of Brady. I I agree with you on that. Deshaun Watson should definitely Deshaun Watson definitely has an argument to be in the top ten. He definitely does what he did in the Texans. Oh my God! I mean, he definitely has a, a argument there. That's crazy. That's a crazy top ten. Uh, I don't know what the players were 
Hopefully it's the players. We hope it's the players voting. <laughs> it might be just the owners. <laughs> but uh No, th- this is only only by the players. This is wow. exclusively by the players, commentated by the players, voted on by the players. I don't know. To don't to know. me now, I can go either way. Mm-hmm. I think Lamar Jackson could be one. Right. If Mahomes was one, Lamar was two, I still wouldn't be upset about it. I right. think those two guys, one or two of the way. Mm-hmm. I, I do agree. I, I think Russell Wilson being number two is a little questionable. I think that's more of people just like him. He's just yeah. a good dude. He really is. A He's just guy. a likable guy. He is. Oh, he has a special, you know, what he does in the pocket, he moves up, how he extend plays, his leadership, the, the whole nine yards does value something as well. Right. But I'm taking Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes one, two, no matter what. I, I agree with, I, I'm telling you, I, that's what I would think it would have been. And it ain't because of his big contract. I'm just looking at the, look at the, the play. How do you, how's the, the freaking, wasn't he MVP of the Super Bowl? Yeah. How's the MVP of the Super Bowl, $503 million, not, not higher. Number two, but be at least number two because Lamar Jackson was the MVP. He was MVP. Yeah. So okay, he's the best. Right. But yeah. the guy who won a Super Bowl MVP should be number two. At the very the guy who throws no look passes should be number two. Right. The respect, the disrespect that these players had. The, um, the, the guy that, that that brought his team down from being down three scores in the playoffs should be number two. Yeah. Should be number two uh, at the very least. So I agree, man. It's a crazy top ten and. Uh, I, I'm glad I don't have to match up players and and do all that stuff. You know what I mean? Big matchups, right? Mm-hmm. You got the Bucks going to play in the Super Bowl. I'm, yes. I'm telling you, like it is. Right. We got a Western Conference final here, kicking off tonight. Yeah, I'm, 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 I want to see a, a preview. I'm pretty pumped yeah. about this. We got the Clippers and the Lakers. Yeah, kicking it off. I'm gonna put you in the clock here. Who who do you think wins this first matchup? I'm a I'm going to tell you now, man. I like the Clippers. What? I like the Clippers. No. I do, man. I like the Clippers. <sighs> I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is about Kawhi. You know, I, I didn't believe it last year, but I, I believe he made me a believer. There's something about this dude that just, he just, I don't, he, you know, he, it reminds me of a show on Comedy Central. There's a, a com- show on Comedy Central about vampires living in today's world. And one of the vampires is a energy draining vampire. Okay. <laughs> Kawhi Leonard drains the energy <laughs> from from press conferences to from you know, everything. Yeah, so for whatever reason, he he dampens a little bit of LeBron James. Um, I know the Lakers have a really really good cast, but Kawhi has a has a way of just bringing out his best and kind of making everybody else come down a little bit. So it's going to be a good you right now. The Lakers by ten. And and you know what? You you wouldn't be wrong to say that. I can't argue with that. I'm just going with. You know, I, I like I like the Clippers right now. You know what I mean? I'm gonna have to, I, I'm gonna have to call our guy Will McDonald, <laughs> drop some facts on you about this. He's a huge Laker fan. I know. Not he a LeBron is. fan. He's a Laker fan. He is, man. So is Raheem. Remember Raheem Monroe? <laughs> yeah, I hear from him. every time I oh, post yeah. something about the NBA, he's freaking right there as, <laughs> as if he's page stalking me or something. But uh, the next one up, uh, we we got the Jazz mm-hmm. and the Pelicans. Right. Who are you taking there? Who, uh, who you think? Uh, I'm gonna go with the one? young buck, man. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Zion, which I don't even know if he plays. He's a he's a game time decision for that game. Uh, so we're gonna see if he plays that game. But if the youngster plays, I, I like the Pelicans. I, I like what they're doing. You like there. the Pelicans? Yeah, yeah. I don't think the Jazz are what the Jazz used to be. So we'll see, man. I like the who you like. You like Jazz or Pelicans? Um, we're definitely going Jazz. <laughs> we're going Jazz. Donovan Mitchell yeah. is going to line it up. Right. Okay. Rudy Gobert. Is gonna have a great game. I mean, they're, they're fourth. They're they're the fourth seed right now right. in the Western Conference. Right. The Pelicans are eight games below. I don't even know why the Pelicans got invited to the bubble. I don't even <laughs> understand. They're eight games yeah. below five hundred. They're tenth. I guess that's the reason why they're ten. So technically, I never said they they're gonna could. win the whole thing. I just said they're gonna beat the Jazz for that game. No way. No way. Right. I think the Jazz put put them to sleep with some Early. jazz music. As the game goes on and in the fourth quarter. Well, well, that's why that's why you're known as the as the Moneyball freaking guru when it comes to picking. Uh, I've heard about the times that you go on hot streaks, and you're the guy. So oh, if, you're, man. if you're the guy that, that that picks it, I'm on one. Yeah, I'm that, on one right now. That's what I'm saying, man. If you're the guy that picks it, uh, I wouldn't. I mean, it's not a bad bet. You know what I'm saying? It's very rare that you lose uh, these these <laughs> these matchups, man. Yeah, so I'm excited about the game. So we'll see, man. The other thing, news, big news, uh, ACC, my my conference for my Hurricanes, uh, they're changing up their schedule, man. Did you did you read about that? That's that's it. They're changing it up, man. Yeah, it's pretty dope, man. So for those who haven't seen it yet, they're gonna play ten conference games. Mm-hmm. 
uh, one out of conference. Notre Dame is in, is allowed to to play for a conference championship this year. It'll be That's the first so, historic season. But it's so for, funny to see Notre college Dame. football say we're going to play ten conference games, and we're going to and Notre Dame will play. So it's like we're going to let you in. Yeah, we're going to let you in. We're freaking, we need you. It's the last kid to get picked out of a uh, out of a kick, out of a <laughs> dodgeball game. Yeah, come on. We'll, we'll That's take it. we'll take Timmy. we'll take Notre Dame. Yeah, we'll take. Them. We come got on. them. We'll bring them overboard. So yeah, so I'm interested to see how that's going to end up working, man. Because you got ten games yeah. now. What they're going to do is the the two teams with the highest winning percentage mm-hmm. are going to compete for the ACC championship to to win the conference. So we'll, we'll definitely see how that plays out. Yeah. Um, as a side note, I mean, we're talking about the ACC. We're talking about schedule. I want to give man, this pains me to say this. I got to give a shout out to the Hurricanes. Oh, go ahead, say what you chest. In the last two weeks. <laughs> Okay, now you you and I both follow high school recruiting pretty yes. closely. Yes, they have picked up some serious momentum with four star, five star dudes yes. under the bridge guys that no one's even heard of. That are you watch their huddle film, they just jump out on the screen. Whatever whatever Manny Diaz is doing out there in Miami, you got to salute him. You got to be proud of the work he's doing to pull these kids in to to bring the U back. And for for me. I'm a college football fan, mm-hmm. and you can't say college football without thinking of the University of Miami being in the mix. That's what makes it exciting. Yep. So, you know, to me, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say it now, man, I, I don't know about this year, but I think in 2021, yeah, Miami's going to be a team to be reckoned with, man. I, I agree with you, man. I agree with you. And we, like you said, we follow them religiously. We're still waiting on one more guy to, to announce if he's going to be a Gator oh, or yeah. a Hurricane. And the whole world's waiting for him. August 6th. Yep. August 6th is that announcement. Leonard Taylor. Exactly. Leonard Taylor. We're waiting to see what man. he wants to do, which I, I really think he, 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 I think he goes to the U. But you're right, Manny Diaz got the, he found some kind of remedy. He found some kind of niche. Kids are buying in, and that's what we want. Time to rebuild these guys. Time to time to keep it a, a hometown thing, man. Like we've been talking about. I, I'm bro, bro. I, COVID or no COVID, Miami's gonna be Miami's gonna be hell on wheels here. Come 2021, I 2022. I agree. You remember when we talked to Andres Borgales earlier in the year, five star kicker. He told us, yeah, something was brewing in Miami. Yep. He told us, watch out the next couple months here. He, he promised us that we would see big names committing to the U and. The young man wasn't wrong. No, he wasn't wrong. He knew something that we didn't. He really did. He He's on the inside scoop. And, of course, his brother's already a kicker there, so I'm pretty sure he told him what the plan was. Yep. Uh, he probably hears the names as well. So, yeah, man, I'm I'm super excited. I, I can't wait to see my Miami team truly come back. You know what I mean? I mean, we've been we've been hanging in. The, I've only had one thing to talk about, which I know James Wilder didn't like it when he was on the show. <laughs> but we, we uh, we've, for the last three years, we've been able to beat FSU. Uh, but that's good. That's great, but we need to get back to Miami football, Miami standards, Miami championships, and, and bringing it back for the city, for the culture. And, and bro, I can't wait. I'm super. I mean, I'm, when I tell you, beyond excited, beyond excited, because I'm gonna go to Jags football field. Because I can't tell you how many <laughs> Seminole fans are out there at the Jags field when it's college football season and it's the week of the Hurricane versus FSU or Gators. I can't tell you. You know, we we love each other, but then. But then we don't like each other. <laughs> you know what I'm nope. saying? It's nope. that week, man. I got my boy, I got my boy King Rucker, who is literally out there in his hurricane jacket, hurricane gear. And it's just it seems like it's just me and him. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Two of you guys. Out of all the island. Fifty coaches is like fifty freaking Florida State yeah, fans. Yeah, but, but but you know what'll happen. The 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 wagon fans have been hiding for the last seven years. Yep. Will pop back up with the hurricane gear and saying, We back, baby. We yeah. back. Absolutely, like Al, like Al Raiders, the Al Davis Raiders, we're back. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait because I'm. Be, that's when I talk cash, cash money right there, buddy. That's when it goes on. So I'm, I'm excited, man. But uh, uh, real quick, George, before we go to the break, man, uh, I got to shoot out. Speaking of King Rucker, uh, over at the Jags, real good friend of mine, man. Him and him and his lady, man, Brittany Jackson. They had a beautiful baby girl. She touched down on God's earth. Uh, Mom is doing good. Dad is excited. Of course, Brielle is finally here. So we want to give a shout out to Brielle uh, from On the Clock Radio to King Rucker and Brittany, man. Congratulations. Congratulations. Uh, yep, she's got two uncles at the very least right now. That's uh, it. Right. And when you're a Jag baby, she's got 400 aunties and 500 <laughs> uncles. The, the whole squad's there. Absolutely, man. So God bless you. God bless the family, man. If you need anything, 
you let me know, all right? All right, so On The Clock fans, make sure you stick around. When we get done here, uh, off the break, and you come back, I got a special young man, 6'4", DB, four-star, out of Louisiana. You don't want to miss him, man. It's Avion Pierce. You're going to love it. Don't forget, you're On The Clock. All right, On The Clock fans, if you're ever in the Lutz area, looking for somewhere to go, grab a bite to eat, sit down with the family, make sure you visit our friends over at Panini's Bar and Grill. They're located at 3973 Van Dyke Road in Lutz, Florida. They're the home of the overstuffed sandwich. They got options, turkey, cheesesteak, salami, roast beef, corned beef. You're not going to want to miss it again. Visit our website, paninisgrill.com. You're on the clock. All right, on the clock fans, man, I got a great guest, man. You, you're not going to believe it. All the way from Louisiana, I, I have a freaking monster of a DB that you're going to want to listen to. You're going to want to know. You're going to know about him in the next couple of years. I guarantee he's probably going to be playing for your favorite college team and your NFL team in the upcoming years. I have Avion Pierce, man. Welcome to the show, bro. What's going on? Nothing much, so how you doing? Man, I'm doing good, man. I'm making it, man. I, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm a DB coach. I'm super excited to be talking to you, bro. You have no idea. <laughs> I've been looking at your huddle film, studying you, and I'm like, oh, my God, I got I to gotta get this kid on the show, man. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate it, Coach. I'm glad to be here. Oh, man. Thank you, man. And not just any DB. You got right. Louisiana's best. Right. He's a top <laughs> DB in Louisiana. Right. Let's get the man. Get yeah. the man his credit. Let me, let me put some respect on it. That's my fault. Let me put That's some right. respect on it. My fault, man. That's right, man. How are you? How's the family? How's everybody doing? I want to make sure that, that we that we get that out in the air, man. Everybody good from from this pandemic? Yeah, everybody's doing well. You know, well, my mom just started a new job because she didn't want to stay around the house a lot. So that's going good. But um, my dad, all is doing well. We're just trying to stay safe and um, just do what we can during this quarantine. Absolutely, man. And, and uh, bro, tr trust me to tell you, it's it's affected everybody, man. But I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear that you and the family are doing good. And you're, and you're you're taking every precaution. You're being good, man. Um, I'm gonna jump into it, man. I, I kind of I, I went forward before <laughs> before I could have, but I want I want to ask you, man. You know that stigma between six four DBs because you're and that's right, listeners. He's six four playing DB, and when I tell you he he's it's like a created player on his huddle film. He's like a Madden created player. <laughs> he's a Madden created player. You know what I'm saying? Um, the stigma is tall receivers can't move and do all these things. What do you have to say to that, man? Because you, you're you're an anomaly, bro. Well, to me, that's a, I believe that's a stereotype. You know, you can do anything once you put your mind to it. And I feel that I have changed the game with me being six four and being able to move. I believe that I could play anywhere in the secondary. So I would call myself very, very versatile when it comes to the DB position. And, you know, just hard work pays off, man. Absolutely, because Terrible in high school, I'm going to tell you what, man, I know you got, you know, you got uh, Mason Smith over there as well, man. So that defense is stacked, man. I saw you cover a receiver, and I, I, my, <laughs> it was so funny on the huddle film. The, the receiver went running out there to line up, and I don't know if you know which game I'm talking about. He went to go line up, and you were up there already looking, you were looking back at the ball, making sure everything was good. And while you were looking to your left, he kind of gave a glaze. Like, he looked you up and down like, oh, crap. I got, <laughs> and I got this dude over me. And again, you're so freaking tall. This the, this receiver had to be top maybe 5'10". He had to be at least 5'10". So he, it's like a another person on top of your shoulders looking at him. Basically. It was so basically. intimidating. <laughs> I felt so bad. I was like, there's no release this kid's going to do. That's going to get him off the ball. This guy's going to monster him up. And sure enough, they try to throw at him, man. You were there swatting the ball down and stuff, man. So... Kudos to you, man. Have you always wanted to play football? Or were you playing basketball too or doing track? Well, well, my ninth grade year, I was playing basketball and doing track. I didn't really get into football. Honestly, I didn't take it serious until my sophomore year. But when it came to my sophomore year, I already had um, a senior, two seniors above me at the corner position. So I was just basically on varsity just to be on special teams. I didn't really um, get to play how I wanted to. But um, my um, sophomore year going to my junior year, the spring, you know, I was working. And I had got a great coach, um, DB coach. And, you know, he just um, seen what I could do. And it just changed to my junior year. I just he developed and just became a great corner. Man, that's awesome. That's awesome. That's what I'm talking about. Now, I know you recently changed positions. 
tell us a little about that change and yeah. what you're doing before and, and, and what are you doing now? And, and what, what led, was it a team need? Was it something you specifically wanted to do? Walk us through a little bit of that. Okay. Well, when I was, um, I was playing corner and I was 63 at the time and I do, don't get me wrong. I do like the corner position, but a lot of coaches on my Twitter that was following me was mostly safety coaches. So I had a conversation with my DB coach right now, um, asking him, um, do you think I should transfer to safety or, but he was telling me I could play anywhere in the secondary. But with me now being 6'4, I feel that I'm more comfortable at the safety level. Because mm-hmm. I practiced it, I practiced it when we had practice, and you know, safety is actually a good position. It's something that I would like to play, and you know, just different coaches telling me that I'm going to be a safety. I could be a great safety, but to me, I feel like I could play corner and safety. Oh, that's what's up. Let, let's let's be real. The reason why you want to play safety is you like to hit people. Yeah, let's, let's yeah, let's, let's, yeah. Let's, let's, let's just address the elephant in the <laughs> room right now. That's 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 why you got all these safeties following you. Oh you watch goodness. your huddle. You just laying laying hits down. Yeah, man. It's it's <laughs> it's literally it's literally like at some point somebody has to call the uh, call the police. It's it's ridiculous. It's I mean it's it's I feel bad for those receivers coming across the middle. I saw guys trying to run slants on you and they're trying to throw the ball low, but you can transition very well. I saw you over the top a lot of plays. I'm like, man, this kid is everywhere, the length, man. The length, the wingspan, all of it. Right, all of it. I was asking George. He's an offensive coordinator, right? So. I'm a DB coach, but yet I coach receivers as well. And I'm like, well, the DB side of me says, this is great. He could cover anything. The receiver coach of me is like, oh, crap. Throw the ball. <laughs> oh, crap. Throw the ball. We better have a great run game because we're going to, you know what I'm saying, this guy's going to shut us down. Does your DB coach or the team defense, do they move you around to cover the number one receiver sometimes? Do they keep you? Yeah, I'm always, I'm always on the island. Yeah, I'm always on the island. They're going to put me on the best receiver, you know, or if we play a man. We'll probably play man on one side and then play a cloud on the other, and I'll most likely be on the man side. So they basically just move me to um, where the man zone's at so I can just play man. That's my favorite position. Yeah. Or they only coverage. put dudes on that side. Right. They only put dudes on an island. Yeah, that's why Revis had his own <laughs> island. Right. Yep. Shout out to you, man. I, I'm definitely glad. Yeah. Now, now as, you, as, you, as we get ready to 2020, I know, you know right now we're all going through quarantine. Let's say we play football. What are some of the goals that you got for yourself for this year and for the squad? Well, you know, with me moving, I moved from Florida to here. And my goal was, you know, to do what I can to help the squad go to the dome. I want to um, get this state, get this state ring, you know. And, you know, my goal is for myself, for myself, I need at least 10, 10 interceptions, at least 10. Where in Florida are you need- from? Where, where'd you where'd you leave? Because if that's the case, I got to – I got a plane ticket for you to come home, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I don't know if you know um, the Davenport area. Yeah, Davenport, I know Davenport. Yeah, yeah, I know yeah. Davenport. That's yes. why I went. I um, attended Ridge Community High School. Wow, shout out, man. They missed a good one. And that, obviously, <laughs> that was before you were 6'4", right? Yeah, that was before. That was before. <laughs> okay, so they didn't know. So no, no offense to those coaches out there, man. That's cool, man. Hey, so I, I know you, I, and I'm not going to ask you to do it here on the show, but I know you. Congratulations to all your offers. I know there's going to be more to come. I love it, man. I love watching the, the youngsters. They're coming up. They're aggressive, man. I love it. Uh, so basically, you don't have to pick a school, so don't do that here on this show. But what type of football <laughs> player are, are colleges looking to get, man, for, you know, on the academic you side know, and football field side? You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Well, on the academic side, I can say they're getting a, a great because, you know, my mom always told me no grades, no play. So right. I always took my academics very seriously. Didn't play around, especially when it came to them tests, you know. On my um ACT, I got a 24. So, you know, nice. it, was, it, was, it was just, you know, blessings, man, you know. And on the um play side, you know, they getting a dog, you know, because I'm always ready, you know. I'm up for any time. And it's just, yeah, I feel like I'm the man now. <laughs> hey, what was 6'4"? You got to be the man. You know what I'm saying? That's Cam Chancellor-type height. And I could just, I mean, like I said, you're coming downhill pretty hard. The way you put your foot in the ground, the way you're going through there, through the, I mean, that's amazing to me, man. Uh, do, I know you do a lot, you know, we do it down here in Florida as well. You must be doing a lot of training, right? Yes, I do. I do, actually. You know, I got this, um, it's this facility that's up here in Louisiana, you know, um, a trainer. He trains very well. But most of the time I do it by myself, you know, because I feel like 
um, that, you know, I could work by myself without anyone helping me. You know, I know what I need to do. I know what I need to get better on. But if there is someone willing to help, I'm willing to try that too. But most of the time, I just work out by myself. Well, with you working out by yourself, did you have – do you, I mean, we all had to. I know my guys had to, and a lot of kids here in Florida. You had to come. In, you had to be inventive, right, in order to get you know, saying the workouts in and things of that nature. Like um, when we were quarantined and we couldn't go nowhere, man. So, were you doing? Do you know any crazy workouts that you had to do? Because I had guys. I know I got this. I got this pull up bar. I got this pull up bar in my room. Mm-hmm. You know, I just do a probably like fifty push ups every day. You know. I was getting creative. I was in here in my room actually working on my, my back pedals, you know. It's crazy because I was actually working on my back pedals. My mom would come in here ask me what I'm doing. I told her I was working on my back pedals, and she laughed at me. <laughs> yeah. Was, but, but mom, I was, moms are going to do that. Moms are they're not going to understand, you know what I mean? Because I had my kids. You're going to laugh at this, man. I have my kids. I got tile in the kitchen. So there's one center tile leading up to the refrigerator. It's like, and I told my kids, if you want to go to the refrigerator, you got to hit this icky drill going to the freaking refrigerator <laughs> like like it's a ladder drill i got my kids doing ladder drills on the tiles to go get water i, know what you <laughs> I was like this is ball is life man and my their mother freaking laughs at them and laughs at me she's like you're crazy i was like whatever whatever we gotta do to train and they still do it to this day man they've been doing this since they were two years old i know their footwork crazy their footwork crazy yeah you gotta have it man you gotta have it uh i gotta i'm gonna put you on the spot here man um since you're a db I had to ask you this question, okay? What is your top okay. five DB of all time? Ooh, that's don't, a good one. Yeah, don't. my top five. Top give you a list five. Of five or just one. I would give me five if you can give me five. That's great. If you can't, I understand. But I mean, all time, Ooh. whatever era, it doesn't really matter. Right. I just want okay, to count it. Count it. Right. And count it down for us. Count it down five down to one. Oh yeah, yeah, you got okay. to. Okay, so oh, this period. Okay, so from this era, my fifth one right now, my. The number five will come in. I don't have to say, uh, I'm going to put Derek Stingley right there for number five. Wow. Really? Oh, yeah, I'm going to put Derek Stingley for number five. Mm-hmm. And then, okay, my number four is going to sound crazy, but I'm going to have to put Jeff Okuda at number four. Okay. Mm-hmm. Number three. Okay, now it's come to the old school. This my this my people's right here. Okay. Okay. Number three. I'm gonna have to go with Ronnie Lot. Number three is gonna be Ronnie Lot. Wow. Wow. Okay, wow. going back old okay. school too. He so said it too. You wa- have you watched highlight films of Ronnie Lot? Yes, I have. I have. I have. So this is this is this explains a lot Story of why you're game. hitting people the way you are. This is, this explains <laughs> okay. a lot. <laughs> so my number two, I'm gonna have. To, oh, this is hard because I want to put. Okay, I'm gonna put. Charles Woods, yeah, I'm gonna put Charles Woods in number two. Ooh, that's a good one, man. I can't. Ooh. Okay, my last one, just because you know he was, you know, he's my idol. That's what I look up to. I'm gonna put Deion Sanders number one. Oh, there you course. go. You gotta put Mr. prime yeah. time. Put, yeah. I'm put Deion Sanders number one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to tag Deion Sanders on Twitter. You know what I'm saying? And see if we can get a shout out from him or something, man. Because that's awesome. I, I, listen, man. It. I do the top five with any position because it gives me a look into the player. You know what I mean? Because usually yes, the nowadays kids, especially when I, even when I played, when I was a kid, I was pulling from different players. You know what I mean? I, I idolized Ed Reed when I was playing. I love them at safety. He was an amazing safety for me. Oh, yeah, Ed Reed too. Yeah, he was there's good. so many. Right, that list is hard, man. It's there's so many. You got Palamalu. You got or Palamalu. I'm sorry. <laughs> Palomalu. Palomalu. I said it like Pat McAfee. Yeah. Pat McAfee says like that <laughs> Palomalu. But uh, you have him. You have Ed Reed. Um, you got. You probably don't even know Steve Atwater. Cause, and this is a funny part, man. I was looking at your film, and I was like, man, as tall. Because Steve Atwater was a tall guy considered back then. He was like six foot two, six foot one, playing safety. And at that time, you know, that's the John Elway era, Dan Marino era. There weren't that many tall guys like him. Bro, this dude used to play with literally arm protective bands or arm protective pads on his forearms. And back then in those days, you can hit somebody with your forearm and it, it was perfectly legal. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so when I'm watching your film and the way you're coming up tackling, hitting people, I'm like, this is like, I had to, I had to research for, I'm being serious. I had to research to make sure, I was like, is he is he some kin to Steve Atwater? Because this dude is coming is he down. Related? <laughs> is he related to him? Because he is coming down. Like an animal right now. <laughs> I mean, 
So that's good, man. I, that's a great freaking list. What do you think, George? That's a good list. I love it. I love it. He got writing a lot on there. So I, I'm a big, I'm a big fan of his. I watched him growing up. So he, as soon as he said him up there, I was like, I, that's a dude right there to watch his good football. And out of all those five DBs, which one best represents you? Which one best says, you know, this is me? Ooh. Oh, okay. I'm gonna say okay now. I'm gonna bring you to reality. Who <laughs> best? Oh boy. I'm gonna say bring us down. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna say uh, I'm. Ra- Darius Stingley, yeah. That's who best rep- Darius Stingley best represents me. And, and why is that? Is it because how he plays? It, the way Yeah, it's because how he plays. Like, you know, he covers a lot of deep balls. He gets a lot of pass breakup. And I feel mm-hmm. like that me and him, we play the exact same. We don't easily go off the first move, you know, because that's what they say, don't go off the first move. You know, very patient, very patient with it. So that's why he reminds me like, of myself. That's what I think that's what my sounds- idol is right now. That's what's up. Ain't nothing wrong with that, man. And and pull a piece from each one of them to make your own, to be your own, you know what I'm saying, Avion Pierce, man. Because one day, you know, while I'm 50, 60 years old and you've been in the NFL, I'll probably be interviewing another high school kid that says, man, I want to play like Avion Pierce. You know what I mean? So it's, uh, Yes, sir. That's great, man. Hey, so on this part of the show, on this part of the show, I wanted to, I wanted to do something fun with you, man. And don't panic. Don't sweat it. It's going to be real easy. On this show, oh, yeah. we like to call... This and that. This and that are just a series of questions, random questions that make you think, put you on the spot a little bit, uh, just to have fun with you, okay? So this section is called This and That. All right, so on This and That, George's going to ask you a series of questions. You just got to wrap it off uh, off, the, off the top of the dome, man, and, and give us – we might have to ask you why on a couple of them, but you're just going to wrap them off, man. You ready? I'm ready. All right, first one, DC or Marvel? We're gonna start off tough from mm. the very beginning. Oh, dang! Yeah. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with DC. Yeah, I'm gonna go with DC. Ooh. Oh, I gotta ask DC. him what's his favorite movie then. Yeah, what's what's why? One? Yeah. Ah! You know, DC just you know brains. I I don't, I really don't know, but I'm gonna have to go with DC because I had the game DC Universe. There you go. So <laughs> that's a good reason. I, 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 I have reason. to I have to go with DC. Grew up. That's no wrong with that, man. There's no right there or wrong go. answers here. Oh. Okay. All right, this next one here, I'm going to make you think about it. If you can have dinner with any athlete or coach, wow. who would it be? Wow. Okay. Any athlete or coach? Yes, this is crazy, man. Wow. Okay, yeah, so. Ever. Okay, this is going to this gonna um, sound, sound weird, but, you know, <laughs> I'd rather I'm be a coach for sure. And okay, I'm sorry, but it has to be. I don't know if y'all know him. It has to be Pete Golden. It has to be Pete Golden. It has to be Pete Golden. It has to be. I gotta look yes. at who who describe to the listeners and to us who's Pete Golden, man. Pete Golden is a defensive coordinator for the University of Alabama. Oh, Pete! Oh my god! Oh, there oh you go. We we're just on the phone with Pete the other day. Yeah, that's my fault. <laughs> we were my <laughs> fault. We call him Goldie, man. Yeah, Pete Golden is my fault. Yeah. <laughs> That's dope, man. You would want to sit down with him, huh? Yeah, that's that, that's my yeah. I would want to sit down with him. That's my that's my guy. Nothing wrong with that, man. That's what's up. All right, these next two here are gonna get a little easier, and then I got a tough one for you here at the end. Uh, when you brush your teeth, do you wet the toothbrush before or after you put the toothpaste on? After, after, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, after. Now, now we're gonna make sure we don't take away the yeah. silence during, during, because because I can see you thinking about. Hold on, what do I do when I brush my teeth? That's exactly okay. what happened. I, I can see you going through the process. I get the toothbrush. I I'm gonna leave the pause the in pause. there. I'm gonna leave the pause in there because he paused. Like, wait a minute, what what do I do when I brush my teeth? Yeah, I had to think. I was like, whoa, hold on. <laughs> All right, th- th- this next one here. Are you an early bird or night owl? I'm an early bird. Oh, there you go. That's what's up. My man likes to be up early in the morning. That's when DBs go to work. Yeah, that's what's early. up. Early. While they're early. While Those sleeping. guys are the ones up at 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> while they're sleeping, he's growing. You know what I mean? That's great, man. All right. This yeah. last one here. I told you I was, I was going to I, I say the hardest one, at least what I think. Hardest one for last here. I'm going to have you rank your favorite artist. Lil Baby, NBA Youngboy, or Rod Wave? Oh, okay. So I have to rank all three? Yep, yeah. rank, rank them from one to three. One to three, man. It's gonna be tough. Start, start from the bottom up. Start from the bottom up, just like just like you do with your DBs. Yeah. Give me, give me number three first. 
Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, so number three, number three, I'm sorry, it's got to be NBA Youngboy. That, that's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. No, yeah, NBA Youngboy is number three. I'm sorry, Rod Wave is number two, and Lil Baby number one because that's my favorite artist. Oh, so we nailed it. There you go. Yeah, we that's nailed it. it. That's right. <laughs> Hey, that's what I'm talking about, man. That's this this, this section of this and that with Avion Pierce, man. Hey, man, I appreciate you jumping on with us and, and talking with us for a little bit, man. I, I'm looking forward to watching your more huddle film, man. I'm not, I'm not even going to lie to you. Like, I can't wait to see you uh, keep playing, man, because, like I said, I have you on Twitter. I got it on any tweets you know you put out there, I'm notif- I'm watching them. So if I see a new highlight, man, I'm, I'm going to be commenting on it, man. I can't wait to see it, man. That's going to be great. Do you have a commitment date uh, set in mind? Well, you know, I really haven't had no commitment date. Okay. But, you know, I, I was thinking about around, you know, the new year, around January, December, January, around there. Nothing wrong with that, man. Nothing wrong with that. So if, if the date gets moved up or the date's after that, man, let us know. Shoot us a message, and we'll come if you come back on here, man, after you make your commitment. We'll talk about that too, man. We'll talk about whatever sports is going around in the world, man. I, I love having you, man. You're, you're, a, you're a funny kid, man, so this is great, man. Uh, no, my pleasure, my pleasure. Now go ahead and let everybody know, where can they find you on social media? They want to follow the top DB in Louisiana. Where can they go find them at? Oh, on my Instagram. At Avion Pierce nineteen. Nice. And on Twitter is at uh, at Avion P, right? At Avion P. Yeah. Capital A A V I O N P. That's what's up. And I want I, I do we do that because we want people to go follow and, and be watching you in support of you know what I'm saying of of the young guys that are coming up, man. So that's dope, man. That's what I'm talking about, man. I'm proud of you, bro. I'm proud of you. So I appreciate you coming on keep the balling. show and keep grinding, keep balling. Don't ever settle. All right, man. Yes, sir. All right, I appreciate you, man. Don't go anywhere on the clock, fans. We still got more for you. We have our guy Sherman Armstrong coming on the show to talk about vast sports performance, his company here in Tampa Bay. You don't want to miss anything. Don't forget, you're on the clock. Hey, on the clock, fans, you can check us out on all social media platforms by searching On the Clock Radio. You don't want to miss it. Especially go to our website, OTC Sports Talk. Dot com. We have merch up there in the store. You can order whatever you want. We got everything for the kiddos. We got everything for the husband. We got everything for wives as well. Go ahead and follow us. Hit like, leave comments, rate all that we want. We know you're going to love it. You're on the clock. All right, so next up on the show here on the clock, we have from Vast Sports Performance, Sherman joins the show. Sherman, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing good. How are you guys? Doing real good, man. Uh, for, I got to ask you real quick before we even get anywhere. How are you? How is the family? Everybody safe from this pandemic and everybody doing okay? Yeah, everybody's doing good. You know, uh, my family, we, we, we stay pretty busy. Uh, so it has been challenging to keep us, keep my, my kids busy because they're, we're all athletics. So, uh, uh, but we've been, we've been making it out though. Good. And how's business been? I, I know you have vast performance, sports performance. I've been over there. I've seen the facility. I've, I've walked inside there. I've had athletes go there. Um, and it, it's amazing to look at. Um, how did you get started with Vast Performance, Sports Performance, and where was the motivation behind it? Uh, I mean, well, we started uh, in California. Oh, okay. So that's where we started when, and I was running professional track uh, for Nike and Santa Monica Track Club at the time. And for, for a professional track athlete, you know, it's not professional basketball or professional football. You have another job, mm-hmm. you know. So my job was, was training and it was adults, personal training, and then I trained athletes as well. Uh, nowhere near the capacity where we're at right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's 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 how we got started. It was just, you know, hey, I need to make an income uh, so that I'm able to provide and pay the bills before I go to Europe to run mm-hmm. uh, in an attempt to make more money. Right. Uh, so in doing that, you know, working for other companies, we decided, okay, you know what, let, let's, let's, let's come up with our own company name. So, you know, just literally sat down for, you know, uh, an hour and just kind of just brainstormed through names. We came up with Vast and uh, ever since, you know, I guess 2000, probably 2000, uh, we've been, you know, just training athletes uh, from, like you mentioned, from, you know, younger athletes to the professional athletes that we had our hands on we were in california uh so that's pretty much how we how how it happened it was you know uh it was just having that mentality that mindset you know knowing that i'm a former athlete and i i I do understand the physical and mental demands of athletics and sports 
And I know there were some things that were missing for me. So I want to kind of form a bridge and uh, have that, you know, type of energy. So athletes, student athletes understand was really required in order for you to do what you say that you want to do. Right. And I looked up on, and I hate to sound weird or anything, but I looked up on YouTube and I saw that you ran for the, for the uh, University of Illinois. I saw that you were NCAA yeah. All-American, Olympic trials. And I'm, I'm like, I'm looking, and I'm looking at this like, man, he is moving. <laughs> like, I, yeah. I saw nine <laughs> times Big Ten champion. I saw uh, the, the finals of the 400-meter hurdles. I mean, I was like, yeah, this – this is legit. No, you know what I'm saying. He knows what he's talking about. And then I, I kept watching. I was like, man, he's really, he's really moving. What were some of your times back then, man? Uh, four hundred hurdles. It was like forty-eight six. Mm. Um, he says it humbly. Which is, I mean, it, that, <laughs> that, that is it's so humbly. Yeah, man, yeah. that that is rolling. But you know, the difference between you know a forty-eight six and a forty-eight one, mm -hmm. you know, which seems so close. I mean, that's the difference between. You know, number six in the U.S., which I was at the time, the number one, right. you know, wow. or number two. And that then that just translates to dollars, you know. Right. So it, it's it's you know, it, it's it sounds fast, but it's like, man, I really need to be that 48 one 48. Oh, right. <laughs> right, right. I had, a, I, had a, I had a friend of mine, man. He, we played high school football and then he went on to LSU. Uh, Xavier Carter, uh, um, I know him closely. He was a freaking. Um, they call yeah. him Pee Wee, but he was he was lightning fast, man. I'm looking, at, but you, yeah. I'm looking at you. I'm like, no wonder he was a Big Ten athlete. I'm looking at you. I'm like, <laughs> no wonder he was, you know, what I'm saying all Big Ten <laughs> selection. I'm like, yeah, man. This it, it was good to watch the highlights a little bit on there. And hope that's not weird or <laughs> puts you out like, no, no, uh, no, nah, that's all good. <laughs> okay, so is it, vast performance is. I saw that you guys have youth programs, high school programs, and, and things. I, for me. I send a lot of kids youth wise to perf I, I try to tell the parents, Hey, you, you need to get with trainers because training is completely different than coaching. You know what I mean? It's not the yeah, same. Absolutely. It's not the same Avenue. It's not the same thing. Coaching. We're, we're trying to scheme. We're trying to uh, try to figure out how the five, three, the four, four, we're trying to figure out those types of deals. We're not really getting the training. Do you have programs now? Have they grown since this COVID thing has happened or has it kind of shrunk down at vast performance? I hear that training has gone up for some. So I was wondering if, if they had the same yeah. for you guys. So for us, performance wise, uh, you know, it has gone up. So mm -hmm. we have, we have a lot of clients. Uh, we have a lot of new faces in. Uh, so, and, and, and that's for performance. Um, but for, you know, after school program and all the, 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 like that program pretty much is halted, come to a complete stop. Mm. Uh, we always do a summer camp, you know, but this summer, you know, we just had too much, you know, it was just too much going on, right. uh, in the world. And plus the, the performance dimension of what we do, you know, had just kind of taken off to the point to where, you know, we're going to regroup and we'll, we'll see what other programs are doing, the parks and recs, and we'll come back next year. So, uh, performance, we, we, I mean, we're, we're, you know, we're doing major things. We're, we're, we're getting a lot of athletes in, helping a lot of kids get better that really want to get better. Uh, but, uh, there are some pieces that have, uh, you know, unfortunately have halted, but yeah. we're, uh, positive that, you know, we get those things bouncing back soon. Absolutely. That's great to hear. And then, and then also, I know I was looking as I was doing research in 2013, you know, you earned the master's degrees in human movement and science, um, as well as, you know, CS and CS, which is one of the highest certification you get for strength and conditioning. So talk a little yeah. about how that certification helps you train these athletes from a different mindset because you see it differently. You have that certification. Talk about how that helps you with the athletes that you train. Uh, I mean, that, that certification helps a lot because the whole, the process and the preparation that went on behind being certified in that, it really uh, sets you up, you know, to be able to take an athlete at any level uh, and understand, you know, progression, uh, but also understand, you know, mentally understand exercise selection, rep count, because uh, there's so many, there, there's a lot of thought that goes into what we prescribe to an athlete, and it's going to be different from a football player to a basketball player. So that certification, you know, really dropped the blueprint, you know, to how uh, you were supposed to function 
but it also confirms some things that, you know, I was already doing, you know, so we understand, hey, we're, we are going about this the right way. We are definitely getting our athletes right and helping them uh, get positioned to be better and have some uh, opportunities come their way. I know, and that's a big shout out to you guys because a lot of guys just train to train. And, and usually yeah. people train from former experiences. And, and those are things that, you know, at times are well. But it doesn't because it worked for you as an athlete doesn't mean it's going to work for that other person as an athlete. So having that certification, that background really allows you now kind of customize, break the athlete down to his individual person and then create a blueprint off of that. So, you know, shout out to to you for having that with the program and then investing that into the kids. That's what it is. It's investment yourself to be able to help these athletes out as they go through that progression. Absolutely. Hey, coach, I I wanted to ask, you you know, with with sports going on and, and everything happening, do you do you see us going into having college sports or high school sports or and again we, it changes day by day but with you know yeah. the Patriot League the Ivy League uh, now the Big Ten the Pac-12 basically saying hey we're just going to go conference games uh, do you see us having some type of sports down the road? I, I mean I, I do see it down the road. Yeah. Um, and you know like you said every day it's changing so it's going to be a little choppy. It's not going to be a smooth. Uh, path. So we're really just regressing and, okay, you know, where can we start the smart way to start the safe way to start. So you, like you mentioned, you see the, the big 10, Hey, we're just doing conference, you know, schedules. Cause I mean, I, as a former strength coach in the sec, I understand what has to happen behind the scenes to put on a production, like a college football game, yeah. you know, uh, in a, one of my parents was asking me just yesterday, you know, why would they just only go conference? Why wouldn't they, if, I mean, if one school is in, you know, Missouri's in Missouri, you know, and they've got to go play Florida. I mean, you're still traveling far, you know, but, you know, interconference, you know, there's a, there's a certain protocol that's been agreed on. So when we start mixing in different conferences, now we have our protocol, you have yours, you know, so the answer to the question, absolutely. You know, I, I think we'll get back to it. It's just going to kind of be, you know, we're just filling it out. You know, we're walking around in a dark room at some some point, uh, just trying to find a flashlight. So, uh, but I'm I'm, I'm hopeful because I I love college football. Yeah, I, I do too. I can't wait. George is a is a Florida Gator fan. I'm a Hurricane <laughs> here. I, I try not to. I try. Are you a Florida Gator <laughs> fan? What, what, what college team do you love? <laughs> the University of Georgia. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we, so we got a little rival stuff going on here. Yeah, That's great. Man. That's perfect. Yeah. That's perfect. So yeah. I know exactly who the message, right, <laughs> right when it kicks off again. I know the yeah. message. Hey, coach, you know, good game or, or hey, coach, don't worry. We'll bounce, you'll bounce back. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> uh, out of the three here, you guys are the two that have the uh, the better programs. I'm a hurricane, and I've been I've been yeah. dying to get back to some hurricane football. And, and God, yeah. give me something to cheer about. The only thing I get to cheer about the last three years is is we beat the Seminoles. So that's the only thing yeah. I get to I get to high five and keep saying, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, we're back. Yeah, we're we're zero and twelve, but goddamn, we beat you. So that's we beat you. Yeah, yeah that's exactly. all I need for my year, Listen, man. Whenever you beat a team that the receiver lines up backwards. I don't know if you can high five listen, about listen, that. Yeah. Listen, it was their trick play. You can't fault us for them coming up. By the way, I would love to have been in the coaching room when that was suggested. Right. Could you imagine that that face? Like, yeah, I'm going to point him in the wrong direction. For what purpose? It's going to distract the corner. It's going to distract the whole country. Like, nobody's ever seen like, Why would you do that, coach? That makes no sense, man. That's good stuff, man. Have you yeah. been have – you, have you recovered from Jake from – you know, going to the league, you guys re- think mm-hmm. you would be ready, even if there was no COVID, you think you'd be ready for this year? I think so. Uh, you know, Georgia, you know, they do a good job recruiting. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's tough to get on. It's, it's, a, it's tough to get on their board, yes. you know. So they, they, they do a real good job recruiting and, more importantly, coaching. And I think they really understand, the, you know, uh, the importance of relationships with their, their student athletes. Yeah. Because that's what's really going to get them to go through the wall for you is that relationship and for them to fully understand that my coach has got my back right. and my value is not t- tied to my performance. You know, he, my coach, you know, he wants me to be successful. He wants me to help the team, you know, but 
you know, it, it's it's me as a person who my coach appreciates. I think the recruiting in Georgia went up, skyrocketed. Me and George had the opportunity, uh, had the privilege to meet Kirby Smart. He came mm -hmm. to Jefferson High School in oh, a yeah. helicopter yeah, and landed man, that was <laughs> and landed on our practice field. And I'm I'm looking at like, yeah, I would. That's a winning <laughs> recruitment tactic. Like that's if out of all the tools to bring your own helicopter, I was like, that's that's pretty good. There's only two coaches I've seen do dope. that was Saban and him, and I know yeah. he worked underneath Saban, so I'm like, oh, yeah, he, he definitely loved the helicopter rides oh, yeah. whenever he could go in there with Nick. <laughs> so that's a great tactic. Definitely. That's one of the things that he was probably saying, you know what, when I oh, become yeah. a head coach, I'm going to get me a helicopter. I'm going to get me yeah. one of those. Absolutely. I'm I would get too. one of those. Oh, yeah. yeah I would too. Now, now. So, hey, coach, so I got something else for you, man. We do a little game uh, here on the show. Uh, nothing too crazy. We call it this and that. And basically, we just ask you a series of questions just to test you a little bit. We do it with all the people that come on the show. So we, we on this, on this, this, and that, we just ask a couple random questions uh, just to see where you're at, coach. <laughs> and again, trust me when I tell you, it's nothing, it's almost like All being right. on the hot seat, but trust me, it's, it's, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. So I'm going to start off real Got easy it. with a simple one. I know you're a businessman, you're a former uh, college athlete. I'm going to hit you with the, with the easy one. iPhone or Android? iPhone. Of course. There it is. Of they course. All, everybody, yeah. everybody. Everybody. He, and he's a world class athlete. So of course it's gonna be iPhone. <laughs> he's a world class athlete. Like, you know what I mean? Like uh, the kids that was that we, a long time ago. <laughs> but you're a businessman. These, these D one kids, every single one that we've I mean, we've 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 interviewed probably about twenty or thirty now across the country. Right. Every one of them have an iPhone. All their parents have an Android. And that's what what is wow. that about? They're like, they're just not in they're just it's not in it now. And I'm like, really? <laughs> I have an iPhone. They're like, oh, well, then you're about business. Like, oh, well, thank you. Oh, <laughs> no, <right>. thanks. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, it's the easiest one I right. can figure out. This next one here, I'm going to take you into the morning. When you when you got a bowl of cereal, is it considered a soup? No. <laughs> why? In his face. His face. <laughs> why why his is it not face. a soup? What a constitutes soup. a soup? Yeah. yeah. Why is it not a considered a soup? It's just it's I've never contents heard with liquid. that type of question. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to on the clock radio yeah, coach. Welcome, welcome to us <laughs> right wow all right this next one here is a hot dog a sandwich it is not a sandwich it's got its own category it is a hot, no, it is hot, solo. Dog, is a hot dog it is by it's itself solo that's right man coach, coach is good <laughs> i don't on care what it's made out of it's, man, it's, it's by great. itself by itself i by feel itself. like you've had that question before as, as the way you were looking you're like no never. nope never no, you never had that question because you look prepared for never. that one. Oh. <laughs> but now he's like, man, oh. these guys. Yeah. What, are, what are these, what weirdos, these, what are these weirdos doing in the morning? <laughs> like contemplating about life because what's going to mess you up, coach? I don't know if you know this. I tell this to everybody because it blew my mind and I'm, I'm a simple guy. I'm just a beer and, and a hot pocket kind of guy. But Fruit Loops, the cereal, is all one right. flavor. It's not, they don't have different flavors. Did you know that? Uh, didn't know it, no. Yeah, my kids put me up on game. They're like, Dad, do you realize this is all, I'm like, that box is 425. It better have two flavors in right. the box. <laughs> Three feeling, flavors. Yeah, like, you, you can't be kidding me. So it blew me away about breakfast, man. But I, I got something else wow. for you, Coach. And this might get a little too personal, so I apologize. <laughs> all right? All right. <laughs> When you enter the shower, and this this caused a controversy, by the way, I know this is gonna sound crazy, but when you enter the shower, do you enter where the faucet is, or do you go to the other side, the behind the, the back of the shower, and enter there? Well, I don't have an option. Okay, well, the way one way. Up, he has a glass door. <laughs> oh, so the way I, I set got, up. I got oh, the one way. That's so it. I have to walk in near the faucet. Okay, okay. <laughs> He's got the one way. I'm it's still, like Kevin Hart. He had to check in the savings. He just got that's it. <laughs> and all the money. I'm still the, grinding over here with, way, the, with that one curtain that keeps touching you. I keep. Oh, I don't yeah. have the glass. Door. <laughs> That cold curtain, yeah. yeah. I'm still grinding away here. We just graduated. Yeah, we just graduated, so nah. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right, so you being, a fun, you being an athlete, I'm going to ask you this question here. I'm going to bring you a bag that has a million bucks in it, okay? Right. You got one. You got you get an option. You can shoot a, uh, a three-point shot. You make it, it's yours. But if you miss it, no social media ever again for you and your business. But you get a mil if you make the shot. Do you take the shot? Hmm. I'm taking that shot. Yeah. He's taking a shot. You're He's, taking He's got a good three-point. Yeah, he is. He's a basketball player. Now, I'm from Chicago, so I... <laughs> I, I still have some 
touch. That's it. <laughs> so I have confidence in my jump shot. <laughs> That's what's up, coach. We gotta have to. We don't have to get. We have to live hey. stream this one time. We're gonna have to see and get the jumper going. We're gonna have to see how it goes, man. Yeah. And if I miss that shot, it's all good. I'm a hustler. I'm gonna go get yeah, it. Right. You'll find a way. You gonna find a way. Right. right. Just put, find it on, a way. put it on wifey. Yeah, you got. You got to post it. I can't do anything. Exactly. You got, you got, we you got, gonna get it. Yeah, yeah. You, you got, got the work. access. You got the access. <laughs> I was trying to get us a bag. That's it, man. Yeah. That's it. Hey, coach. That's it for this and that, man. We just ask simple questions, man. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Nothing too hard, man. I, I know you're a busy man, coach. Uh, I know you you got the business going. Um, if you want to go ahead and shoot out to the people, it's on iHeartRadio, Spotify, and iTunes. Please let them know where they can find you at, your website, and, and things where they can come in and sign up. Yeah, uh, Vast Sports Performance. Uh, we're at 6026 West Limbaugh Avenue uh, on the corner of Limbaugh and Anderson. We're right down the street from the AMC Movie Theater. Uh, I mean, we train everything, age five and up, multiple sports. It doesn't matter. You can find us on social media, uh, Instagram, uh, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, and if there's any questions you have, I'm real quick to answer my phone. You won't wait long. <laughs> appreciate it, Coach. I really appreciate your time, man. Thank you so much for everything you do in the community and the Tampa Bay area, man. I know everybody appreciates it. And I have, like I told you, a ton of athletes that talk great about you and your, and your program, man. Sweet. So I really appreciate it, man. Awesome. Well, thanks, guys, for having me. And uh, I'll be hearing from you guys soon. All right, Coach. Definitely will, man. Thank you again, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you for coming on. Appreciate you. Have a good uh, rest of your week, and we'll talk to you next time. All right, on the clock, man. I, I really can't tell you how great it was having both guests, owner, founder of Vast Performance, and our guy, Evian Pierce, uh, taking the time out both of you. I really can't tell you how much we appreciate it. And uh, I look forward to keeping up with both of you guys, man. It was great, man. Yeah, man. Wh what a great show. Definitely pumped, excited. Uh, thank you for everybody for joining the show. Don't miss us August 3rd as we have Chris Oladokin, quarterback from Sanford, is going to join the show. My guy coaches me. He was nine years old. I'm, I'm glad to have him on the show. And also we have Taylor Scott from Trench Academy. He's a good friend of the show. He joins on as well. If you want to find us on social media, uh, go ahead and search On The Clock Radio, Twitter and IG. You can also find our website at otcsportstalk.com. Until next time, you're on the clock.